All right, folks, so you can see here I've made a uh, made the modifications to that front spar. I nicked that with a file, so I'll need to polish that out. But I did quarter-inch relief holes, kind of drilled at an angle, like right in the V of the bent flange, and then uh, still got a little filing to do to take the burrs off of that and then polish those that's, that scratch out there. But uh, that's essentially what's required and kind of what's shown in the drawing. Uh, you do have to do a relief hole here because if you have just this edge going to a sharp 90 down around the uh, the flange, uh, you'll have a, a significant stress riser right there. So like like with your ribs, when you've formed your ribs and everything, anywhere where there's a bend like that, you've got to put a relief hole in. So stuck with the quarter inch relief holes that are called throughout most of the plans and uh, just trimmed that to fit. It's uh, 20 millimeters about 21 millimeters from the end and this is about a 18 to 19 millimeter flange it clears by about one millimeter which is fine and this needs to be right up against the edge of that so once you attach it with l so we'll come back after that's all drilled into place and set where it needs to be okay so for drilling these ribs what i've done <clears throat> is taken a uh, rafter square or rapid square and i've got it pushed up against the uh, rear ribs here to maintain squareness in relation to the flat table which is the uh, line that the spar is on <clears throat> to get it to get the actual rib itself to be square um, to the spar now there's some variation when you draw your center lines across the flanges on the ribs and uh, if you use the um, vertical surface of the rib as your reference as you're drawing you know as you're using your edge distance block or even just your finger to draw these center lines generally this is going to be pretty straight you don't want to use the edge of the flange as the uh, surface to draw your edge distance block across and i'll show you that here so if i was to take my edge distance block here and put the uh the reference point on this side because of the way that the metal curves and buckles and kinks and stuff as you're forming it, this actually gives you an irregular surface to try to draw these across and you don't get a straight line. Whereas if you use this side, it's pretty consistent all the way across, although you do get some little buckles here and things like that. So, uh, And the same goes on the ends when you're drawing those center lines on the ends to use through your, your pilot holes, your sight holes here. So what I do is, uh, the best I can, what I'll do is line up this hole or uh, this sight line uh, in relation to the line I've drawn on the spar. So I've got to come to the right a little bit with this, this rib. And I'll try to maintain as much of a line as I can here uh, with this line here. So I'm going to want the, the sight line inside the hole to line up with this line as much as possible. However, I want the rib to be perfectly vertical in relation to the spar. So that's why I take the square and make sure that that's the case. So once I've got it lined up as best I can by sight, I then take the square, finish it off a little bit, and then do a final drill on the holes. So that's how you end up maintaining a very vertical rib on your rib stations here and here. And then, of course, when I do the uh, tip ribs, I'll do the same thing. I'll have the square. I'll use the square to maintain squareness. So... It's critical that you maintain square uh, surfaces without any twist and with a, as much uh, on as level of a, of a workbench as you can. Because if you enter, once you go to drill the skins to these, you don't want the skeleton itself to have any twist in it that you have to correct by stressing it against the skin. So um, there's going to always be a little bit of that with a home built airplane, but. You know, using squaring blocks or, uh, you know, like a rapid square and proper sight lines that are drawn perpendicular to surfaces and things like that, you can minimize that as much as possible. Again, there's always going to be just a little bit of that, but you compensate for best you can before you actually skin it. And then if you have to do any additional compensation during the skinning process, hopefully that will be very, very minimized. So anyway, uh, that's how I'm setting these up to line them up. You always want to clamp the flanges of the ribs to the spar you don't want to rely on the clamping force of here and here that i've got this is just to keep the structure stable while i'm drilling i'm using these little clamps here to actually clamp the flange down while i drill so so 
<clears throat> that way the flange can't buckle away, the rib can't slide back and forth, even though I've got some clamping force with these uh, clamping blocks here on the table. So, Okay, so I flipped the skeleton around, so I've got all the rear uh, back ends of the ribs are all uh, drilled, match drilled and cleco -ed. and uh, so now the front, this is the front spark here with the front mounting brackets. One thing I wanted to point out about lining up, you can see here the rib is twisted and uh, that's something that you have to correct when you do this. So what I initially did was <coughs> lined up the sight line in the hole there, clamped it into place and got my <coughs> square out and went ahead and untwisted the rib up against the square. So, you know, lining everything up, it's hard to do one-handed here, but lining, lining up the uh, rib so that it was square. There's a little buckle to it too, so you push it up tight against there and you make sure that it's square. And then you want to recheck your sight lines and you see how that has moved and that's just because the rib was twisted in there so now that i've got the rib square i need to readjust these sight lines a little bit to uh, make sure that they're in the right location uh, furthermore because these four rib stations here 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 and here have to be further match drilled to the nose ribs uh, whereas the tip ribs are a full rib you want to, I piloted the spar with an A3 drill and what I'm going to do is use that same A3 drill to pilot the front of the rib so that when I then go do my back drilling to match the nose rib to that location I'm going to open it up to an A4 to match drill it for riveting. So be careful, it's easy to uh, get careless and end up opening that up to an A4 just when you're match drilling these two pieces like like you do on the rear side back there and then have your match drilled size hole to try and drill these. And the reason you don't want to do that is because if by some chance uh, something moves a little slightly or the, the drill chews in a regular hole or whatever with the pilot hole you can correct that with the final match drilling. But if the the, the first hole you drill in this piece of material is the final size hole uh, you can't correct anything unless you dry, drill an oversized hole and in this case you can do that if you have that problem you can then drill it again with an A5 rivet and set an A5 rivet in there to compensate for any uh, match drilling problems however if your final hole size is supposed to be an A5 then you can't you can't then step up to a larger pop rivet um, at least with the materials that we're supposed to be building this plane out of, which is A4 and A5 rivets primarily. Uh, you don't want to then have to step up to a larger rivet yet to compensate because then you're adding a lot. Of, you know, if you do that too many times, you're, you're actually adding quite a bit of weight in, in, a, in a matter of pounds. So, you know, make sure that you know if you've got one layer or two layers or three layers or four layers of material to drill through. And in this case, there's four. Remember, there's a spar, a spar doubler. Those were drilled uh, initially with the A3 hole. I'm going to use the A3 hole then to pilot this. I'm going to take everything apart, take the rear spar off, and do the final match drilling uh, with the A4 for the nose rib. So just another tip there on setting these up and laying them out and uh, being very, very careful. And don't forget to adjust any sight lines that you need to once you've got it squared up and make sure you've double checked everything before you drill those holes. All right, gang. So. I want to show you something that I found on these uh, stabilizer tip ribs. The rear spar of the horizontal stabilizer rear spar here is from uh, top to bottom wide enough to accommodate a rear rib in here plus the width of a doubler. So these doublers are 40 millimeters uh, or excuse me 40 thousandths thick which is one millimeter so there's enough space in here to fit the rib plus two doublers. So essentially the gap of the spar is two millimeters wider than the dimension of this, uh, the back of the rear rib. So the rear ribs here are specified at 106 millimeters uh, from top to bottom. Then you put a uh, um, 40 thousandths doubler on the top and the bottom and then that gets you your tight fit. So on the tip rib, however, this dimension here and here is the same as the rear rib over there. And so what you end up with is a slight gap right here and the top and the bottom. Now it's not a problem, you can draw those tight with rivets and everything else, but it, it does 
um, it will look like it has a slight gap there. So what I'm going to do is actually make a doubler just for the tip here, although that's going to put a slight uh, gap where the skin draws down. It'll tighten up the top to bottom dimension. Furthermore, it's going to move the tip rib uh, ahead one millimeter. And what I noticed with the nose ribs here is by the time you get them attached to the spar here and get them all dimensioned, they do actually stick out about an extra, uh, a millimeter to a millimeter and a half, almost two millimeters, further than the tip here sticks out. And so because you're basically folding the nose skin around one axis down the length this way, I don't want to then try to compress the skin to close a gap on this very tip because it'll cause a buckle in the center because it'll be a compound curve and I'm only bending it along one radius or one axis. So by putting the doubler in here, it's going to close up the gap from top to bottom, uh, which will be stronger. It will leave a little millimeter, uh, two millimeter gap uh, just from where the skin has to draw down to the uh, rib here. Um, but that's, that's okay. Uh, from a structural standpoint, I'd prefer that gap there than a gap where the spar has to you know, cl clamp down. And then it's also going to push the, the tip rib ahead one millimeter in the structure uh, to keep the nose of the tip rib more in line with the uh, nose ribs here. I was going to remake all of these and just make them slightly shorter to accommodate it, but by putting that doubler in there, it, it accomplishes both tasks. It makes uh, the gap between the top and the bottom of the spar um, fit tightly, and then pushes the tip rib ahead enough where uh, the difference between where the nose skin folds around here versus here will be negligible. So lots of different ways to overcome things. Um, I don't think it's from a design standpoint, I don't think it's that crucial anyway, either way. That's just how I'm going to address it. Because I can't compare these directly to what Zenith provides in the kit, I don't know if that's something that they've even, you know, addressed at all. I mean, it could be that they're fine with the gaps and that things just, you know, whatever clamps together, clamps together, whatever gaps you have are there. And when I was looking at the factory demonstrator at uh, Oshkosh this year, there certainly were gaps in different places uh, where skins attach and things like that. So I don't think it's that crucial, but for the very minimal amount of time that it'll take to make a couple just uh, t end doublers here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that and it'll, it'll help clean up the geometry just a little bit when I go ahead and skin this. So more on that later. Thanks.